All right, guys, so we have our script and dialogue training today. We are gonna go over the Zillow Flex uh, ALM script. And that's really what we wanna focus on today. Those of you guys that are getting Zillow Flex calls coming in, this is a great opportunity for us to role play the script and kind of go over best practices and stuff like that. So uh, we really wanna use this time to really just dive deep into the role play. Um, for our ISA team, um, I think you guys aren't really getting these Zillow Flex calls coming in, but you guys are following up with a lot of these leads that are nurtured. So it's also good for you to understand the perspective of how these leads came in and how that conversation goes. Cause you can use this script also a modified version of the script to kind of follow up with eight with clients and see if they want to go look at homes and stuff like that, and try to identify some of the areas that they want to look at and set that up for one of the agents. So. Uh, it'll kind of serve those two purposes. So who on this call feels like they have the Zillow Flex script down at a pretty decent level? Who feels confident that when the Zillow Flex uh, call comes in, a client inquires on a particular property, you feel like you got it down? Brenda, was that, you raise your hand? Okay. Yes. So then we're going to role play this. I really just want to go across the room and role play it with the agents that are uh, getting the calls coming in. So Brenda, you ready to role play? Yes. <laughs> I just got back from vacation. So <laughs> it's going to be uh, going to be good practice for me. Yep. Let's jump right in it. So um, I'm calling you or the calls coming in. It always starts off with, you know, Alex here connecting you with uh, Enrique, who's looking at 123 Main Street. So ring, ring, ring. Okay. Well, am I, am I the agent or are you, or the client? Yeah, you're the agent. Okay. Sure. Okay. I'm the, I'm yeah, the client. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm um, the buyer. I'm the, I'm the one inquiring on 123 Main Street. So we're okay. going to role play it like a Zillow Flex call. So. Uh, Alex here connecting you with Enrique, who's interested in 123 Main Street. Okay. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Hi, Enrique. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm good. Uh, well, this is Brenda, your Zillow Premier agent with EXP Realty. I see you've made an inquiry on 123 Main Street, and um, you are looking to uh, see this or tour this home. Um, at 4 p.m. today, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to see if I can see that today at 4 p.m. Okay, great. Um, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what interested you in this home? Yeah, um, I like, uh, it looks pretty nice in the photos. It looks like it has a, a, a nice remodeled kitchen and a big backyard. And that's kind of okay. what, what we're looking for. And I like the price, it was it said $9.99. So we're trying to stay, stay around the million. Okay, so good price point around a million. You like how the home looks. And um, are there any other areas that you're interested in besides this one in Santa Clara? Uh, um, yeah, either yeah, Santa Clara or even like West San Jose also. Okay. Uh, I work at Apple, so anything kind of not too far from there. Okay, so you want to, you're looking in Santa Clara and West San Jose with commute, good commute from Apple. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then if I find any other homes um, that match your criteria, can I go ahead and send them to you as well? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, great. And uh, when I get off the phone with you, I'm gonna send you my personal contact information. I'm also gonna confirm with the sellers if I can um, book a tour for us at 4 p.m. today. And um, I'll give you a call back in about an hour. How does that sound? Okay, yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, great. Talk to you soon, Enrique. All right. Okay, let's stop right there. Um, so here's what we're looking at. So I just wanna recap what the objective is with the ALM. So who knows what ALM stands for? Appointment with location. The Zillow Flex ALM. Yeah, appointment, location, motivation, 
All right? That's what the ALM stands for, appointment, location, motivation. So the reason it's ALM and not LAM or MLA or MAL, it's ALM because you want to go in that order, right? So uh, immediate feedback for you, Brenda, is you want to go in that order, right? You, you waited to the end to confirm the appointment. Mm -hmm. When someone's calling in on a property, you want to immediately confirm the appointment. You want to do the A first and then the L and then the M. Right. Yeah. So that's the immediate feedback I would give you is, is as soon as you confirmed, I wanted to see it today at four. Awesome. Let me go ahead and check with the seller and make sure it's available to tour at four. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, call you, text you back after this call to confirm. Mm -hmm. um, Enrique, if, if four o'clock doesn't work, are there any other alternate times? Is there one or two other times you're available to see that home this week? Okay. Just in case four o'clock doesn't work for the seller. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I really want to emphasize the, the importance of booking the appointment, right? Because if you just book the appointment, then the objective is pretty much already like 90% done, right? You already got the appointment. You already confirmed that part. Now the L and the M, that's more of your opportunity to now talk to the client a little bit more and build some more rapport with them and also find mm -hmm. out a little bit more about what they're looking for. But the number one objective out of any incoming lead is to always book the appointment, which is why we confirm the appointment first, All right? So for, the, uh, for Brenda and those of you watching is do not deviate from the order that it's meant to go in, right? Stay in the order of ALM um, so that you can, uh, you know, you get the hard part out of the way first, right? That's what we're trying to do. Get the hard part out of the way first, which is just booking that appointment. Now, Got it. thank you. Um, I like that you. I like that you asked um, what you know. What other areas am I looking in? Right, that's the location part. Right, is this the only area you're looking in? Are there any other areas that you're looking in? Right, that's the L part. Right, the location. Um, and then you asked a little bit about you know. I don't know. Did you ask more about like what my must-haves are or what my criteria is? No. She said, uh, she did ask, what did okay, you I like about I, the house? You did. Yeah, yeah. What did you like about the house, right? I yeah, think so another was, question I could have asked was like, uh, how soon are you looking to move into a new home? Yeah, that's, exactly. That's motivation. Yeah. The motivation, yeah, how soon, how soon are you guys wanting to move into a home or what did you like most about this property or what are some of your must haves, right? Because now you're asking these questions to get them to speak a little bit more about their motivation for that particular property and their motivation in general. So I would always encourage you guys to, to just ask a few more questions, right? Like when you ask about location, hey, what areas are you looking into or what other areas? Maybe ask, what is it about those areas that you like? Why that area? Oh, okay, do you work nearby? Oh, I told you I worked at Apple. Oh, awesome, how long have you worked there? So yeah. you want to follow up with build additional yeah. comments and questions to build more rapport. Yeah. Right. So the biggest feedback I can give you guys is don't try to hurry up and hang up the phone call. Right. Because if the client is engaging, if they're talking back to you and they're opening up to you, the longer that conversation goes, the more rapport you're going to build. Uh, you may have some clients that they don't really give you too much so you may have to cut it short but when you have those clients who are just openly talk to you you know keep it going a little bit longer right because then that slowly builds some rapport um but uh, overall um solid job i would just work on the order in which you did it and then i have a question for you brenda oh yeah is it is that the level of energy that you had, is that your natural level of energy or did you like turn it up a little bit or would you say, how would you rate your energy level on that call? Um, I like, I try to turn up my energy level like as much as I can, like during a call and like sound excited for them. So, um, mm -hmm. but like during the role play, I don't know. I, I think it was maybe like a seven or eight, I don't know. Okay. During the call, I am like, I, I do try to be as excited as possible for them. 
Okay. And here's the reason I'm asking, right, is remember right now you're able to see me, but on a call, you're, it's just all phone. You're not able to see anybody. All you can do is hear them. And all they can do is hear you. So they, they don't know your body language. They don't know if you're smiling or anything like that. All they're going to be able to go off of is like how excited and maybe like your tonality and stuff like that. So I would encourage you to, you know, if you're at a seven right there, you got to pull it up to an eight or a nine as far as energy level. Got it. Right. So for the sake of everyone, right, because we're all learning right right now, you're on the spotlight, right, because we're you're the one that volunteered for the role play, but everyone is going to learn from this. So we're going to do it again, Brenda, and I want you to think ALM. Okay. I want you to think more rapport building, more rapport building, uh, feed off of what I tell you. If I tell you something, like feed off of it a little bit. Okay. Keep the conversation going a little bit more. And then energy level needs to step up a couple points. Okay. Right? Like, I need to know that you're excited for me because I'm going to feel excited if you're excited. Right? Okay. All right. Let's try this again. Uh, uh, Alex here connecting you with Enrique. He's interested in one, two, three Main Street. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Hi, Enrique. This is Brenda, your solo premier agent. How are you doing today? Okay, stop, stop right there. Okay. Energy. Brenda, I think naturally <laughs> you're gonna have to either talk a little faster. Uh-huh. You're gonna have, to, I just came from the gym a little bit ago, right? So I'm a little pumped up, I'm amped up, I had a great workout, right? My energy is high right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, so Brenda, here's a tip on how to get your energy up. Are you, are you leaning on the, on the desk right now? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Can you stand up? Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, stand up. I'm serious, right? Move your hands. Move them around. Move okay. them around. Sorry, I'm like holding the computer. Right? Okay. It's all right. <laughs> When you're excited and energized, are you more leaning and slouching forward or is your chest up open so you can get your voice out there and speak loudly and clear? I'm going to stand up. I'm sitting on a higher chair right now, but I'm going to stand up, right? Okay. If I want more energy, like I'm loosened up, chest open, right? I'm not like slouched over. I'm opened up, right? Okay. I'm just pointing my, uh, I'm pointing my laptop up a little bit. Everybody stand up. Everybody, let's stand up. Come on. <laughs> stand up. Let's get it going. Shake it off. All right. You make me feel like I got to go to the gym, yeah. like after this meeting. <laughs> hey, that's what it's going to take. Trust me. But here's the thing. If, if you bring more energy to your conversations and you bring more enthusiasm, you are going to influence how the other person feels. Right. If you're excited, they're going to be excited. If you're still on vacation, Brenda, because I know you just got back from vacation, and you're kind of relaxed and chill. Yeah. I was also in a country where like everybody spoke uh, Spanish. So, <laughs> buenos dias, <Hey>. everyone. <laughs> there you go. Look at, see, I already see the energy coming <laughs> off just by you standing up and laughing. There's already more energy right now. All right. So, Brenda, if you just won the lottery right now, you guys know the lottery. Someone just won like a billion dollars, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you just got the lotto ticket, pretend you're holding a, I don't, I don't have a piece of paper, but I got a piece of paper in my hand right now. And I read the numbers off and I won the lotto and I was like, holy shit, I won. Yeah. Like what noise would you make? What noise would you make if you just won the lotto? Right now? I don't know. I would probably make some weird noises like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> all right. So I want you to do that, right? Like Brenda. All right. Hold on. We're going to roll place. Brenda, it's Enrique. I want to let you know you just won the fucking lotto. A billion dollars, Brenda. Holy shit. I just won a billion dollars. <laughs> oh my God. There we go. All right. All right. All right. 
Now, Brenda, Brenda, Alex here connecting you with Enrique. He wants to see 123 Main Street. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Hey, Enrique. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, this is Brenda, your Zillow premier agent. I see you made an inquiry on 123 Main Street. Would you like to tour the yeah, property? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd like yeah, to tour like the that property one. Looks today? Like a nice one. Yeah, 4 p.m. Is, is that, a, is that a, uh, possible? Yeah, 4 p.m. Let me double check with the sellers to see if 4 p.m. works. And if it doesn't work, is there any other time that you're available? Um, I'm pretty much off of work at three, so I can be there at 4 p.m. either today or tomorrow. So yeah, anytime like four or 5 p.m. works for me. Okay, well noted. Um, anytime after three today or tomorrow, um, when I get off the phone with you, I'm going to um, send you my personal contact information so that you can reach me if you want to make any changes. Um, but before I uh leave the phone with you can i ask you a few questions about what interested you about this property yeah definitely um it's actually uh, my wife loved it because it has a remodeled kitchen and she wants you know she, our, our house right now has a crappy kitchen uh, so she wants something that's remodeled we also like the backyard because we have two dogs so we, oh, nice. we want something that has a little yard for the dogs yeah Oh, nice. A remodeled kitchen and a huge backyard for the dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? Um, I got actually two Rottweilers. They're like, they're a little scary, but they're looking, but they're really nice. Uh, they're really nice dogs. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Are your dogs outdoor dogs or indoor dogs? No, outdoor. We're super active. We go like on trails and hiking and stuff like that. Yeah. So they're wow. outdoor dogs. Definitely. That sounds really fun. That's great. Okay, so I'll definitely take a look at um, bringing you the, to the home with a huge backyard for your two dogs and a remodeled kitchen for your wife. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what they say. Okay, uh, and is there any other uh, areas of uh, are, other areas that you're interested in looking to buy a home? Um. Yeah, ideally Santa Clara or like West San Jose because I, I work at Apple, so um, it's not too far away. I want to kind of stay, you know, not too far from Apple, the Apple campus. Perfect, perfect. So if I find any homes that match your criteria, can I go ahead and send them to you in the West San Jose area and Santa Clara area? Can we add this to the Yeah. Chart? Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, great. And how soon are you looking to uh, move into your new home? Um, honestly, we're pretty flexible. We're renting right now, but we're on a month to month. So if I find the right home, you know, we're, we're ready to make a move pretty quick. Okay, so pretty flexible and you're on a, one, a month to month right now. So once, once we find the home, you're ready to make a move right away. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And uh, have you spoken with any of the mortgage lenders? No, no, not. Um, I did a couple months back, and yeah, we were all pre-approved and stuff, but we just haven't, you know, really found any homes that we like yet. But I think there's more, okay. more homes coming on the market now. Okay. Yeah. Great. So let's let's definitely. Um, sorry. <laughs> Wait. Am I supposed to? Were you, were you like wrap it up like this or? Is it okay for me to go into LP? Wrap model? it up. Let's go. Like, <laughs> no, keep going. You booked the appointment, appointment, okay. location, motivation, rapport. Wrap, wrap it up. Let me know you're going to confirm. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Well, it was very nice talking to you. Uh, let me double check with the sellers to see um, if 4 p.m. works today. And uh, I'll be giving you a call back as soon as I can. Okay, Enrique? All right. Sounds good. Okay, thanks. Talk to you soon. All right. All right. <laughs> quick. All right, guys, let's give it up for Brenda really quick. Let's give it up for Brenda because I know I put her on the spot. <laughs> um, feedback from you guys, from the rest of you guys, compared to the first call, and then we did that little energy exercise, and then the second call. What did you guys notice from that? Put it in the chat.
or who wants to raise their hand and raise your hand and give me some feedback. <laughs> who can I call on? Give Brandon some feedback. Diana, okay? what you got? Oh, just that, you know, you seemed interested and your energy was right, like you really cared. So it all matched. It was good. Thanks, Diana. <laughs> Jomo, what do you got? Yeah, um, I was, I, I agree with Diana. Her energy levels were more, were a little bit higher. And um, I, I really like that she repeated and affirmed and approved um, everything that you said. And also um, the rapport building was more. When she asks about the dogs, what type of dogs and so forth. But yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. right. Who else? What else can you give her? Some other some other feedback. Her personality came out. Her personality <laughs> came out. <laughs> yes. Personality came out. That's the most energized I've seen you, Brenda, so far. <laughs> Maybe I gotta maybe I gotta tell you you want a billion dollars every day, right? <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing is a lot of us naturally, maybe at home or when we're chilling with our friends or whatever it might be, we may be a little more quiet and laid back. Like me personally, I'm a little more quiet and laid back. When I'm not at work, when I'm not hosting these trainings and stuff like that, I like to chill. But what I know I gotta turn it on. I turn it on, you know, when I know I got to do a, a, a training for you guys or a coaching session or lead our team meeting, like I really make sure like I bring out that energy because I know that my energy and enthusiasm is going to transfer to you guys, right? You guys all, all have to be able to channel that energy, right? Because the difference between the first call and the second call, the second one, once her energy was up and she stood up and chest out and she won a billion dollars and she did a little scream, now throughout the conversation she was laughing and smiling and if i was just hearing that over the phone i'd be like oh this this girl sounds like a cool girl right she sounds pretty nice she sounds more warm and inviting and you know she has a cool personality that's someone i can look forward to meeting and maybe see myself working with them right so brenda maybe the billion dollars that was, that's the exercise we did right now but something happened when you said I just want a billion dollars, fuck yeah, or whatever you said, right? <laughs> something happened, something changed there. So the challenge for you is how do I feel like I want a billion dollars every time I freaking answer a call or every time I'm out there in the field or every time I'm on an appointment or every time I'm meeting someone or I'm showing a home? You may have to write that down somewhere, yeah. right? Or you may have to like save it on your screensaver and look at it. Or just think think about this conversation right now before you step onto that conversation onto the phone call or before you step into the training or the open house or the showing you need to just say i just won a billion dollars right and i need to bring the energy of someone that just won a billion dollars yeah i right? just won a billion dollars is gonna be my new mantra now like every morning there you go <laughs> right <laughs> because yeah, because when you just won a billion dollars like you're on cloud nine right like you're like yeah. you're hyped up you're on cloud nine and you're not so much worried about about like what's gonna happen with the conversation you're more worried like about being in the moment and feeling good and connecting with that person all right mm -hmm. so yeah. stop stop thinking am i doing this right right that's the, that's the other part too, is sometimes when we're, when we're doing these scripts, we're too focused on memorizing the script and we're not focused on being in the moment and we're not focused on just tuning in with the client because we're too worried about, am I going to mess this up? Did I do it right? Did, am I saying it right? Right? Like, don't worry about that. Just worry about bringing the energy and just worry about hitting those points. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? As as long as you connect and as long as you're in tune with that person you're going to have an impact on them and they're going to want to move forward with you with you right so don't worry about like do i ask the lp mama now or whatever like you do what feels like it's coming natural and what the client is responding to does that make sense yes all right <laughs> who wants to go next we're going to do this we're going to do someone else now 
Thanks, Enrique. <laughs> you're welcome. Diana. I'll go. You're gonna volunteer. All right. So when I get so my I'm first, give you... when I get my first call, I feel like I'm I'm like nervous on the first one always, but then once I, you know, get the calls after all, you know, after the first one, I feel like more comfortable. So yeah. Okay. Well, so so what can you do to not feel nervous right now? Can you you want to stand up? You want to shake it yeah. off? You want to win a billion no, dollars right no. now? <laughs> no, like I could do it now because I've been on it for a couple days, but like I I just don't That's even want to go back to that first one. Well, like, okay, when I'm surprised, like you're on flex. Oh shit, it's flex. And everyone knows like my phone and they throw it and I get it. I'm like excited. But then after like I'm on it for you know a couple days and I get comfortable. But I'm ready. Let's let's go. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna switch it up a little bit, right? And this is important for you to try to build rapport, listen hit the ALM and try to get in tune with who the client is, right? Because every client's gonna be different. It's not, it's not gonna be the same client that Brenda had. It's a different, my name's John now. I'm not Enrique, I'm John, mm -hmm. right? So Alex here connecting you with John who wants to see 123 Los Gatos Boulevard, $5 million property. Hello? Hey John, this is Diana, your Zillow Premier agent. How are you? Hey, I'm good, how's it going? I'm good. Glad to do. Glad to hear you're doing good. I see you're interested in a property in Los Gatos, huh? Yeah, yeah. I saw that one. Uh, what's that one going to sell for? What do you think it'll sell for? That's a good question. Let me pull up those details, and when we meet at the property, I'll bring you comparable sales. But let me ask you, what time frame are you available today so we can go check it out? Uh, I could be there probably five o'clock. Five o'clock work. Okay, so five o'clock and I'm gonna check with the seller. Give me about 20 minutes just to make sure the property is available for a showing at five. If for some reason it's not, do you have, are you available at six o'clock as well? Or what about tomorrow? So I can have two options. Yeah, yeah. any day, any day, five o'clock. Five o'clock is good. Five That's five o'clock when I'm, yeah, when I'm done with, with my other stuff, so. Okay, day, John, sounds good. Is there any other properties that you've come across that you're interested in so we could schedule a showing and see them both at the same time? Uh, it has to be the right, right property. Uh, I mean, we're, we don't need finance. We've got all cash, so we, we're fine. You know, just as long as it has a, at least 4,000 square feet, has, needs a swimming pool. I need to have that view. We want to be on the mountains. So uh, you got something else like that, I'll take a look at it. Well, let me take a look at the inventory. I'll check if I have any coming soons or new to the market. That way we can check them out before anyone else. And I'll make sure that it has a view. You have a swimming pool. You want at least 4,000 of living areas. So uh, yeah, I'll pull up some properties and have those ready for you. In a couple of minutes, I'll send you a text message. So you have my personal contact information and we can stay connected. It, do you have any questions for me, John, before I let you go and book us this appointment for this week at five? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long have you been in the business? I mean, we want to make sure we're working with an experienced agent. You know, this is, this is a a big deal for us. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I've been in the business since 2005 and my team has closed over 150 transactions this week. So when we, I mean this year, so when we meet, I'll share with you our strategies and also share with you our Google reviews so you can little learn a little bit more about myself and my team. Will that work for you? All right, yeah, sounds good then. All right, five okay. o'clock. All right, John, I'll send you a text in a bit and confirm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's give it up for Diana. Mean. What was the difference with this customer, guys? What was the difference with this customer? It's the deep personality. You just want to just want what you want. I don't know. That's right. Anybody watch Yellowstone? I was trying to do my best impression of Kevin Costner in Yellowstone. Just I love that show, right? But I was a little bit cowboy right there, a little country. But um, here's the thing is you're going to get some clients that don't want all the fluff, right? So I really, really want to commend Diana where she gave just enough to kind of lock it in and let me know who she was. But she didn't like overdo it, right? Because she could tell I was just kind of being straight to the point. But 
she held her own, right? It did. I, I wanted to be a little harder on her because she's more experienced, but she held her own, right? Like as soon as I came something back, she spit it back. That's a great question. She wasn't phased at all when I said, how long you been in the business for? That's a great question, right? She didn't start buckling under pressure. So really, really good job, Diana, on just like, like firing back, keeping the, the tempo going. Um, you asked, you know, I don't even know what you asked. I was, so, I was, I was really impressed with what you said. Um, well, I, but, I just, um, yeah, I just I asked. What, yeah, I just said asked if there was, I, I just asked if there was any other properties that he's interested in because I figure what he likes, he knows what he likes. So if you have it, let me know and let's go check it out. And then you shared with yeah. me what you wanted. That was it. Yep. I want a view. I want 4,000 square feet. Because you're going to get some clients like that. They'll do business with you. They obviously called. They're obviously interested. I said I was all cash. I'm ready to buy a $5 million property, but I don't want the runaround. I don't want the fluff. I don't want you trying to sell me. I want you more trying to work with me, right? So you're going to get those personalities where you got to get that quick read. What type of personality is he? That's why learning like the DISC profile, right? Does everyone know what the DISC profile is? The D-I-S-C. It's just basically different types of personalities. You got some people who are really straight shooters. They're just straight to the point. You got some people who love the talk. They're super bubbly. Oh my God, right? They just love to sit there and chit chat for hours. You got people who are more just all about the data, right? They're just more all about numbers. They're more like engineer types. They're, they're just, you know, more nerdy, so to say, right? They just want to know the numbers, the, the ratios, the percentages, all that good stuff, right? So you got to be able to, to figure out who do I have on the call and how do I adapt the a little bit more to their style, right? If someone is straight to the point, you gotta be a little bit more straight to the point. If someone's talking and they're just like opening up, you gotta open up with them. You gotta play into that, right? If someone's asking you like, you know, numbers and stuff like that, you gotta be able to not maybe give them everything over the phone, but let them know, hey, this is what we're gonna look at when we talk, right? Or I'm gonna prepare this information and we'll go over those numbers for you. Right. That's being able to adapt to the conversation. The big mistake a lot of agents make is they don't modify their style when they have a different personality. And then what happens is people like to deal with people who are more like them. Right. So if you're way different, you guys aren't, you guys are going to maybe butt heads or you guys aren't going to see eye to eye so much, or there's not going to be as deep of a connection if you're not speaking their language. Really quickly in the chat, what personality are you? Are you more straightforward to the point? Are you more like bubbly, interactive, love to talk? Or are you more like I'm more about numbers? I'm more a little more reserved. I'm a little more intellectual. What would you say you are? Write that in the chat. And you could be a combination of both too. But what would you say your style, your style leans towards? Diana said she's a D. Straight to the point. I think I think you're a little bit of mix of a, of a D and an I, Diana. I think you have some traits of you where you're like you could be kind of blunt and just say what you got to say, but then you also can sit there and like talk. I do have like someone, a lot of love. Know, for a while. So you know, I have a lot of love. That's where I get you know torn. If it's about business, so they call me. I'm like, how much is it? That's it, you know. But then I do feel a lot. So <laughs> that's why I was curious. I wonder what I am. Yeah, a combination of all. Jomo said. Um, yeah. So remember, like, no one is exactly one trait, right? Everyone is a combination of all. But you're gonna have some more where you naturally more lean towards. Um, so there's going to be your natural style, like the way you are normally. And then you also have an adaptive style where like you can turn it on when you're in a particular setting or when you're around certain people. Right. So like I said, me, I'm, I feel like I'm more, uh, a little more laid back, more analytical, I think on my natural style, but my adaptive style, I think I could be a little more to the point. A little more interactive when I need to be. 
Um, but it's important to know what your style is, right? And then it's important to know what, how to identify other people's styles as well so that you can kind of modify uh, how you come across in these conversations. So Tony wrote to the point, right? So Tony, let's roll. So let's, let me uh, unmute yourself real quick. Can you hear me? Yes. Hear me? yes. Okay. So you're to the point, a... right? Mm -hmm. So Tony feels she's more to the point. So here's the challenge. Here's going to be the challenge, right? Is when you're like, you feel like you're a little more aggressive or just more straight to the point, less fluff. When well, you're talking to someone. I think most of the like times that. I want to. I want to interact with them, you know, and get all the information. But most of the time, I think, I think I mostly want to just get all the information that's needed. Not saying that I don't want to interact with them and ask them certain questions or you know build rapport, but most times it's just to the point getting what is needed. Okay. So. The, the challenge I would give to you, Tony, or the, the feedback I would give to you is know when you have to be to the point and know when you have to build a little more rapport, right? Depending on the other person. Because if you come across someone who's more interactive and they more like to talk and then you're just straight to the point, they may perceive you as being like rude, right? And vice versa. So when someone is straight to the point and you're too talkative and interactive, they may get annoyed by you. Like, oh, you're just too talking their ear off, right? So there's that fine line where you got to kind of balance it, where sometimes you got to shorten it or you got to elaborate a little bit more and just be a little more uh, charismatic, right? So, but the mistake you're going to make, like this is all about getting better, right? Scripts and dialogues. This is what this whole training is about. If you want to get better at converting more leads, you have to get better at how you adapt to different situations because if you're just, it's like a doctor, right? Like if, if, if everyone goes to the doctor for different, you know, symptoms and the doctor is just giving everybody Tylenol, right? Because that's the only flavor that they have. They're not, it, it's not going to work for everybody. Right. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Right. But you can't give the same, uh, you know, prescription to every single client when every single client has a different style. Because then you're gonna lose some people. You may win some people, right? You may like by default, because if we already know there's like four or five different styles, naturally you're gonna run into some people that where it does click. But then every other person you talk to, they're a different style and you don't click. And that's where you gotta constantly be kind of adapting that style, right? Does that make sense? Okay, uh, who wants to try one more? Uh, or you have a question? Kassan, what's your question? All right, uh, so the difference I noticed with Diane and Brenda is they're both conversational, but Brenda conversational are more open. Diane conversation is that she answer a question and ends it with a question. Is that, what personality is that? Because every question you ask, if you notice she answered for instance, oh, that's a good question. Uh, what time will work out for you? So most of our conversation, they start with a question and actually ends with a question. So what type of personality would that be? Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a personality. I think that's just a sales skill that she's, that she's learned, right? Is you always wanna carry it forward right? Um, when someone gives you something, mm -hmm. you know, they give you a statement or something, you want to always acknowledge what they said. And then you always want to move it down the next line, right? Like you want to move it down the path of the sale. So if, if I just said something, forward. but you're trying to get the appointment. Yeah. <laughs> acknowledge it though. It, right? Acknowledge, always acknowledge what people tell you. Cause if you just kind of brush it off and go to the next question without like saying, I heard you, or that's a great question or acknowledging them, then that can also come off a little bit rude to them. Right. So all, always acknowledge what they say and then ask the next question that goes in line with the script that you're trying to follow. That's what I recommend. Okay. Uh, Liliana, did you have, 
you have a question or a comment? I just wanted to add on that. I think also like the reason Diana was just asking those questions was because of Enrique's tone. It was a different type of client. Um, he was more open with uh, Brenda. So I think that's why Brenda was able to sh have more personality in the call because that's the energy that he was giving. But he was giving more like, I just need to see this house. So I think Diana's really good. And I've seen her on the phone and her and I role play sometimes. We'll like call each other. And whatever like client I am, she's really good at adapting of, of it. If I'm more like, hey, I just want to see this house. She's like, no, I got it. You know, what time works for you? She will just make sure she gets the appointment. If I'm more like, oh, well, you know, I'm really excited to see it because um, on the pictures, that kitchen looked amazing. Then Diana will kind of adapt to it and she'll be, oh, it, it did. It looked really good. I'm really excited to see it too. Um, did you see the backyard? And I'm like, yeah, it looks like, you know, she's she's more, um, it, she just, and I think that's kind of what Enrique was saying about the personalities. You kind of just need to know, depending, depending on the tone and what that person's giving you, you know how much or how little to give back. Yeah. And that's where you got to mirror, try to mirror and match the tone and the personality as much as possible. Right. This way you're not clashing. It's not a clash. Right. Like being very adaptive. Right. As I see that in the comments, because the last thing you want to do is. Remember, we have a short window, right? It's, a, it's just a phone call when they're calling in. So there's just a short couple minutes to try to make an impression on them. Now, once you meet them in person and stuff like that, you're able to have a little more liberty to kind of be who you are, you know, but on the initial call, if all it is, is just a phone call, mirroring matching is going to be very important so that we get to the next stage of the process, right? If you, if you don't mirror and match and you totally have a miss, a miss uh, alignment on the initial call, you'll never get to the appointment. Does that make sense? All right. So it's a strategy, right? Like do your best to mirror and match on the call so that you get the appointment. Then in the appointment, you can not like tailor it a little bit more once you find out a little bit more about them. And here's the thing. Have you ever met someone who maybe on the phone, um, they're a little more laid back, a little more reserved. They're like not really opening up. Uh, but then when you meet them in person and they kind of get to know you, now they open up a lot more, right? So that also... You got to remember that like someone, it's a stranger going on Zillow, clicking a button. It's patching you to a, an agent. They have no clue who you are, if you're a good person or not. If you have a criminal background, some people are just a little, little more cautious nowadays before like opening up too much. But then once you meet them in person and you start getting to know them, you start asking more questions. They now get to see who you are. They see your appearance. They see how you handle yourself. You give them your business card, all that good stuff. They kind of, you built a little more credibility. Now they start putting their guard down and they start opening up. And that's when you can open up a little bit more and connect with them, right? So just always remember that we're dealing with strangers as well. And there's a bit of hesitation a lot of times from certain strangers, right? Not everyone is just going to be all happy-go-lucky on the call, even though that may be who they are but they might have a guard up because it's like you're they're calling someone on the internet. Does that make sense? Okay, we got time for one more. Uh, who would like to role play this Zillow Flex call now? now? If you're taking Zillow Flex leads, you should be volunteering to, I see Carmen, I see Alessandra, I see Anna, I see Mai. This is your chance to get better right now. Who would like to volunteer? Here. Sure, I'll go. Let's, let's go, Carmen. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Um, just gonna give you a wild card right now. Let me see. Let me see who am I gonna be? Who who is who's gonna be calling you? <laughs> okay. The, the dreamer. Um, <laughs> the dreamer buyer. <laughs> yeah, the dreamer. Uh, you're, you're going to talk to Dan, the dreamer, right? Dan, the dreamer. Uh, my name's Dan and I'm looking, um, uh, I'm looking at this fixer upper cause I really want to like completely renovate it and make it my own and build my family and see the, hear the birds chirp. 
Uh, all right, ring, ring, ring. Alex here. Alex here, connecting you to Dan, the man. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey, sorry. Um, hi, Dan. This is Carmen hello, from Brazil. Hi, Dan. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. It was a little, uh, it was a little, little choppy there, honey. Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. Sorry about the bad reception. So. Um, hey, this is uh, Carmen Chung, your Zillow Premier agent. Uh, with EXP, we have over 500 five-star reviews. How can I help you? Uh, I was interested in the property and I clicked the button and now they put you on the phone. So uh, can we see that house? Yeah, I see it's uh, 123 Main Street in San Jose. Is that the area you're looking for? um oh, i'm yeah. sorry is that the yeah, uh, rather, is that the only area you're looking in yeah well i'd rather be in beverly hills plenty but that's all i can afford so um yeah san jose uh yeah I, that house looks like it has a lot of potential awesome were there any other homes you're looking at that you'd like to add to the tour uh, if i can afford it um yeah i mean i'm, I'm on a uh uh, a beer budget with champagne taste, you know, but I'm willing to get my hands dirty and fix something up and turn it into my own. So, um, yeah, I, I can't spend no more than a million though. Awesome. Great. I'm glad you guys are scrappy. Um, a million dollars. That's a great budget actually, uh, for this area. So you said San Jose, is that because you're working close in that area? Yeah, I work downtown San Jose. So, um, you know, anything, you know, within a 10, 15 minute, you know, drive would be good for me. I'm open to different areas of San Jose. Okay, absolutely. I will uh, go ahead and set up a save search for you. So just in case if there's any other homes that is within your interest, it'll um, populate and you can go ahead and let me know. We can add that to your tour. Uh, was it Charmaine? What was your name, Charmaine? This is Carmen Chung with PRG Real Estate. Oh, Carmen, I'm sorry. I'm, I've talked to so many agents on the phone. I have no clue who they are anymore. I'm just looking for someone who's going to take care of me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I see uh, you are wanting to see this home at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Um, is there a different time that would be, um, I'm sorry, is there another time that you're available if the seller isn't available during that time? Uh, I get off work at 3.30, then I got to go to uh, yoga, then I got to go to Zumba. Um, so about five o'clock any day during the week is good for me. Okay, sounds good. So I'll, I'll book you in. So just to recap, we're looking at 123 Main Street, San Jose at four o'clock. And if you're not available, we'll shoot for five o'clock um, throughout the week. And um, we will be in touch. I will go ahead and send you a text message so that we can stay connected. And uh, feel free to text, call, or email me if you have questions. How does that sound? Okay, honey, I will. Awesome, thank you. So you will also receive a survey from Zillow. I'd really appreciate it if you can give me two thumbs up. Okay, I'll check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'll give you a call back right. once I get that Let's um, stop right there. appointment confirmed. Let's stop right there. Stop right there. Let's give it up for Carmen for putting herself out there. I know we're putting you guys on the spot and I know I'm throwing some curveballs at you. So let's give it up for Carmen for making her best attempt. Carmen, I have a question for you. Yes. Give me your perception of who you were talking to. What was the personality type like? What was your perception? said did I kind of throw you off because I try to throw a couple of little curveballs at you so yeah it was kind of hard to hear I don't know you. why but like um you were breaking out so it was like really really hard to hear but like um yeah I think you had your your walls up a little bit so it's just kind of matching the energy okay um who else can give her some feedback what sort of feedback can you give Carmen this is your time to help her grow and learn. Raise your hand, unmute yourself. 
Let's let's grade it. Did she book the appointment? Let's go ALM. Appointment, location, motivation, and rapport, right? How did she do on appointment? She booked the appointment. Yeah, she booked the appointment, right? That was the easy part. Um, did she ask about location? I think yes, she, she asked did. what areas I'm looking for. Yes. Yeah. Any motivation? Did she ask about my motivation? Did she find out a little bit more about what I, what I wanted and why? Yes, she did. A little bit? Okay. Now, what about rapport? Did she build some rapport with me? Yes, she did. <laughs> yes, she did. Okay. It was the tone for both of you was flat because there was not much energy from you and there was not much from her to, because you seems like you want to talk, but because of her energy, you just, okay, yeah, okay. So there was not much rapport, but she did. Okay. I was trying to give her some opportunities to pick up on something. I was trying to see what she was going to do with it. When I said, like, um, I talked to so many agents. I just want someone who's going to take care of me, right? I, I said that on pur purpose because some clients, they may feel that way, right? They're just getting passed mm -hmm. to different agents. What, if I would have told any of you guys that, right? What could you have said in that circumstance? Cause she kind of just, she kind of just bypassed it a little bit. What would you have said, Brenda? Um, I would have uh, asked maybe like, oh, okay, well, what's important to you um, in a real estate agent? Like what, what would you like to see from a real estate agent? Something like that. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. You're in the so, right hand. What was that? You're in the right hand. <laughs> Yeah, you're in the right hands, right? So I'm going to give you, um, I think, Carmen, overall, you, you like you got through it, right? And you hit the points. But I, what I would maybe challenge you on is using some of these cues to kind of build a little more rapport. Right. Um, and play into it, play into it a little bit, right? Like, I was calling you honey. I was, uh, I told you that you know, I can't, I'd rather be in Beverly Hills, you know, but I can only afford here. Uh, I told you that I, I, I've been speaking, I even messed up your name, right? On purpose. I said, what was your name? Sharon, Sheila, or whatever. Um, I, I've talked to so many agents. I don't even know who they are anymore. I just want someone to take care of me. Like I would have leaned into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I would have said, Dan, don't even worry. You got to the right agent today. Like I'm going to take real good care of you, right? Like let's forget about all those other agents you talked to. I'm sorry you're having to deal with so many agents. Going forward, I'm going to be your main person of contact. Like, I would have said something like that. Or I would have said, like, oh, Beverly Hills? Man, I'd love to be in Beverly Hills, too, right? But, uh, you know, we're in the Silicon Valley. It's pretty expensive out here. Like, I would have just, like, um, empathized a little bit more mm -hmm. with the client. Um, because, I, because this client... Just so you know, like he's someone that loves to talk and he was trying to see if you were someone that loves to talk. But since he wasn't kind of getting the talk back so much, he was kind of putting his guard up a little bit much. Right. So um, remember, the script is a guideline. But when you have someone on the phone that is kind of being playful with you and opening up and stuff like that, you got to play back. Right. Play back with them. Open up with them. Joke around with them. If they're joking with you, joke around back with them, right? Um, even if that's not maybe your natural personality, but if you would have threw a couple of jokes back at me or just kind of played into my jokes, I think the guard would have just dropped a lot more and then we would have hit it off and, and started becoming best friends in no time. Yeah. So that's the feedback I have from you. Other than that, like, you know, the script, you know, the appointment, you know, the location, you know, the motivation, like, you know, all those things, mm -hmm. right? Like those are the, you, you hit all those points, but I think the challenge of going from good to great is being able to now really like build that rapport with someone. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and be, be comfortable going a little off script. If you need to, it's fine. You could go a little off script. 
Um, okay. Remember, the script is a guideline, but sometimes you run into some characters and like, it's okay. Like, be a little funny with them. Be a little, let, let loose a little bit, right? Like, be a little playful with people if that's the energy that they're giving you. Great. Yep, got it. Okay. So we're coming up on time, guys. What I want you guys to take away today, right, is that you guys have experienced three different personalities, right? Three different personalities, right? You had like the open, interactive, you had like the straightforward guy, and then you had the one that was kind of in the middle, like he wanted to be open, but he wasn't, you know, stuff like that, which is the whole point of this is that that's what you're going to get when you're answering calls or when you're meeting people in person or when you're meeting people at open houses or when you're getting these Zillow calls to come in, you're going to get the whole spectrum of personalities, right? So I purposely did that because I want to challenge each one of you to be able to step out of what's normal for you and be able to adapt to different situations when you have to adapt, because that's what's gonna force you to grow by getting out of your comfort zone. That's what's gonna make you a better salesperson, right? There's a reason that you go to uh, you know, Baskin Robbins and there's 31 flavors. There's not just one flavor, right? Everyone is a different flavor. So you gotta be able to adapt to someone's you know, different flavor when you have to, especially on that initial call so that you get it to the next step, which is the appointment. Then at the appointment, you know, you got to kind of read the client and see who they really are and stuff like that. Right. But, um, I know like in my career, I've had clients where like, I had to just be straight to the point with these clients because that's how they were. There was no personality. There was no laughing. It was just like bottom line, how much you sell in my house for, or bottom line, what's it going to take? Like, it was just all bottom lines all the time. And then I had the other clients that were freaking crying and laughing and all the emotions and sad and this and that, like it's all over the spectrum, right? And you have to be able to like connect with them on a different way and stuff like that, you know? So remember the script and dialogue training is to make you guys better sales people. Um, and that means you gotta adapt, you have to adapt. So good job to all you guys. Let's give each other a round of applause and, uh, you guys all just won a billion dollars today. You just got your lotto ticket. You just won a billion dollars. Right? Let's channel that energy, that billion dollar energy when we're out there, when we're on the phones, when we're talking to people, like let's freaking channel that energy. Cause I promise you like that positive energy, that enthusiasm, that is what's going to get people to want to be around you. Right. People want to be around people who inspire them and motivate them and get them to feel a certain way. Right. So let's channel that energy, guys, when you're out there in the field, when you're talking to people, when you're amongst your peers in the office as well. Like, let's have that energy. Like we're going on vacation tomorrow. and We just made a billion dollars. Right. Like that's the energy that we're walking around with. Um, we're here to uplift each other, inspire each other. Right. And push each other to the next level. You guys good with that? Can you do that for me? It's Leo season. Sure. I don't know what that means, Anna, but... Leo in the house. Oh, sorry. It Anna means you show up Leo as your best self all the time. There you go, baby. The show up Ooh. as our best self. Woo! Right? <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Good job today. Let's get it. Let me know if you need anything. Thank Peace. you. Thanks, Enrique. All right, Enrique. Bye. You're welcome.